07 Buick Lucerne and we just pulled the EGR out here. It would be located right here behind the intake. You can see the ports for it. And you can see here, here this hose here is our inlet into the intake. There's a tube that goes underneath and into the intake. And then below it, you can see our tube from the exhaust <laughs> into the EGR. So let's come over here. We've got the EGR put up to the battery. So here on the EGR, you can see our big port, which is our inlet from the exhaust. And this would be our little port, which would be our uh, bypass into the intake. And this is the electronic pulse with the pulse modulation. So when I send power to it, it opens up that valve. So that would be EGR letting in, and that would be closed. Let the exhaust into the intake, no exhaust in the intake. All right, now here we have our connector diagram. We were probed into A and E, which are our solenoid low, or ground, and our solenoid high, which is power. All right, so we got the scan tool hooked up to this. We got our EGR picked open. Um, we discovered that the EGR on this car will only open and drive, and will not in park or reverse. So the second here, I'm going to get in there, and we're loaded up and drive, and we can watch the EGR valve open on the scan tool, and Chris can take some temperature readings of it as well. All right, go ahead. There you can see our, it commanded at the centers there. And this is the error. The error is the EGR what it wants and it not receiving that at that time. And then you see it comes up and it gets what it wants. Now I'm gonna go here and see what temperature we got on that hose. We got 195, 200 degrees on that hose on the intake for our EGR in, inlet. All right, after discussing with Chase, we noticed that it jumped, dropped off pretty steeply here. Right after, right on our, oh, right on our load, it dropped off right there. That's because he went full throttle, so then the TPS, the TPS sent a signal to the EGR signal, so it turned it off, because it thought it wanted wide open throttle to get going. So that's why we saw it, and then it went wide open and dropped that all off. So now we're gonna do a test where it doesn't do that, so we can show that it comes up and it'll sit almost steady. Yep, go ahead. There we go, we see it's open and holding. We saw our error percentage. We're at 80% 80 command. Everything's looking good. All right, let off. Now we're back at an idle, so EGR shuts. Everything's working well. All right. So I've got the scan tool here. I'm gonna do an EGR test. I'm gonna see if I can crank that thing up. See what we can get. I, I was in it a second ago and it kicked me out. Apparently I've only got a certain amount of time. So let's see if I can get this done before it kicks me out again. Uh, let's do EGR desired position. Let's just go up. Here you can hear the engine just getting real upset. 80% commanded. 90. At idle. 100 is set to desired EGR and idle. And it's idling right now, but you can see, if you can't see or hear, that it's really running rough. All right, so now I've got the connector pulled off here so I can probe it. I'll show you the diagram again here in a minute and our specs. So here on our DMM, I'm gonna probe the A terminal. Let me see, we got 12 volts. 12.4, which is good. That's where it should be. And then here's our signal circuit. We've got our 5 volts reference, which is also in spec. And then these two do not have anything. They're, they're unable to show anything. And this is a ground here. Alright, here we can see our specs. So we had more than 11 volts. We had 12.4 on that uh, ignition circuit. And then here's our 4.8 to 5.2 volts on the reference disconnected. That's what we saw there. We didn't get any 
resistance reading in our information, so I guess we're just not supposed to look for that. We can go check it real quick, though. All right, back on the little sorn today. We've got PCV valves here. Uh, this one's kind of the hidden one under your map sensor, so you know that sits in there. Unplug her, pop her out of there. Get this, push down, twist it off, comes out. You reach in there, grab a PCV valve out. Here she is, all oily, you know, greased. And you can do a first simple test, you know. It does shake and make a noise, so it's a good start now. Do the rest of the tests on her. All right, so we were discussing operation of this specific system because we realized we weren't really sure on it, but we've got it nailed down now. So air comes in behind the MAF, behind the MAF, into our intake, down through into the crankcase, all the way over and back up through the bottom of our PCV there, then up through the PCV and into that hole which will then put it in the intake and also gives air to this map sensor. All right, now we're showing a test of if our, uh, our inlet hose, let's say this was plugged. So I've got the vacuum gauge here. So we can see we're sitting at, you know, about zero with this vacuum line open. So I'm gonna plug this and our vacuum is gonna slowly increase here. So this would be, you know, again, simulating this whole, the inlet being plugged, so we're drawing air out of the crankcase through the PCV now. And we could diagnose this by pulling the oil cap off. And you can feel there's a tension to it, and you break it, and then there, there's your vacuum that you go back to, you know, zero PSI, no inches or more. Through. So you can put that back on. Let it draw some more vacuum. You could also do the same thing if you pulled the dipstick here. You can see it lose that vacuum. All right, now we jumped on Marco's green Miata. And we got his PCV out. And we're doing that click test with it. So you put your thumb over it while the car is running. You can hear it click. Hope you can hear that in video. That shows that that's functioning.